good evening. You're watching Estuary News. Coming up, we head to Hornsea to take a look at its seawall with a difference. And we ask your opinions about the new leader of the Labour Party. And my guest is Joy Wood, a romantic novelist, here to talk about her debut novel. Welcome to Estuary News, I'm Emma Lingard. Now it's time for the news headlines. Now we've got two the A18 has been labelled as the most dangerous road in the UK, according to a new report. The map, provided here by the Road Safety Foundation, shows the stretch of road which runs between Laceby and Ludborough, between the East Midlands and Yorkshire, is the most persistently dangerous, according to their statistics. Medium high-risk roads include the A46 and the A180. Many of the roads between Bridlington and Hull are medium risk. Young offenders in Grimsby have spent the summer making movies. As part of a programme with the Summer Arts College, young offenders have been making a film about the dangers of child sexual exploitation. Matt Clayton from the Youth Offending Service says this scheme is a unique opportunity for them. Um, it has n numerous purposes. You know, obviously, if you engage young people who are engaged in crime and criminal behaviour for three weeks in the summer holidays, you're going to reduce the further likelihood of crime and criminal behaviour. But what, you also, what it also brings, which is a huge additional benefit, is for too often a disengage, disengaged group of young people, they're going to achieve something in the summer holidays. Humberside Police are warning people that mobile phones offered at below market value are likely to be fakes. It follows two instances at a takeaway in Hull where an offender entered and offered a smartphone at a discounted price to the customers inside the building. It turned out later that the box had been switched. It actually contained a fake mobile phone. The police are reminding members of the public that any discounted prices are likely to be either counterfeit or stolen. Hornsey has begun to display artwork inspired by the Spanish city of Barcelona. The seawall in the seaside town needed, to, needed brightening up to encourage more people to visit the southern promenade. And it was the idea of Let's Go Hornsey Regeneration Group member Hilary Rose. It stemmed from myself going to Barcelona and seeing some hoardings around um, a regeneration site that had been put up and it was fabulous, it was colours everywhere and I was taking pictures of them and I'm thinking that's so strange to go to Barcelona and take pictures of hoardings, why not do it over here put, so people can put it on Facebook and social media sites and advertise Hornsey as well as something nice to look at. That's all from me for now and I'll be back with more news soon. If you've got a story for us then please call us on Grimsby 01472 31553 or search us on Twitter and Facebook. Bye for now. The coast is the fastest eroding coastline in northern Europe and we often hear about sections of cliff falling into the sea. To stop this happening, towns like Withensea and Bridlington have had sea walls built. In the 90s, Hornsey had one put up but now it's beginning to look tired and a group of residents have come up with an idea to smarten them up. Dan Kemp went along to take a look. It was built to protect Hornsey from the sea, but the wall needs revitalising. That's according to the Let's Go Hornsey Regeneration Group. When I'm walking along here, because I walk my dogs here quite often, I can't see the sea because the wall becomes so high, you can't see it. And the wall is very drab, so we thought, let's jazz it up a bit and make it look good. The team have devised a competition for people to send in pieces of art to have added to the sea wall. When we started, we didn't know if we were going to get sort of six or 60. I think we got well over 70 in the end of the first uh, group of, of, of um, pictures. Um, out of those, 17 were chosen that we thought would be suitable to be able to be put onto the wall. Um, unfortunately, we had problems trying to get um, funding for this, and we tried various different uh, uh, grants. But in the end, we got local sponsorship to start off with the first seven to, to launch it. But we still have, obviously, a lot of other pictures now to and find the money to get up on the wall. The big long one that's five panels uh, was done by Alex Dyer, who's a, a, local, a local artist. Um, and the others are mostly local. There's one or two from perhaps uh, Hull and um, some of them from, from people that actually stay in the caravan sites in Hornsey. And where did the idea come from? It stemmed from myself going to Barcelona and seeing some hoardings around um, a regeneration site 
that had been put up and it was fabulous it was colours everywhere and I was taking pictures of them and I'm thinking that's so strange to go to Barcelona and take pictures of hoardings why not do it over here put, so people can put it on Facebook and social media sites and advertise Hornsey as well as something nice to look at. East Riding of Yorkshire Councillor for Hornsey and Town Mayor John Whittle is encouraging more entrants and is delighted with the efforts so far of local artists who have submitted works. I think it's brilliant. Uh, it, it just shows the, the amount of talent we have, have in the town. It shows how much um, faith and belief, if you like, they have in the setting that they live in and how much they've thought about it. I mean, to, to produce items of art like that isn't just a question of sitting down with a piece of paper, it's a question of thinking about what they're doing and making what they produce relevant to uh, the town they live in, uh, what Haunt is all about, the visitors to the town, and the, the area of the wall itself that the artwork is going to be on. It's all part of a wider project to develop Hornsey's South Promenade. It's hoped in time projects like this will help to develop the areas of the seafront, not explored as much by tourists. We value our seawall, obviously without that we'd all be inundated. But uh, we felt that it'd be nice to brighten it up a little, uh, make it look uh, more attractive and encourage people to walk down this section of the promenade so they can go down to see the building compound down there and uh, appreciate the greenery around them. Still to come tonight, we find out your views on Labour's new leader and it's quite surprising. And we have the latest in the local sports news. Now, many authors I've met have started writing as a hobby, and this was the case for my next guest. Joy Wood has recently had her first novel published. Aimed at a female audience, it's an adult novel telling the story of twin sisters, and it's a story of murder, blackmail and passion. And Joy's with me in the studio. Welcome to the studio, Joy. And that sounds quite exciting, and I know it's got sexual content in it, which I will say... <laughs> I think oh, that's important, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get the idea for this? Um, well, I've, I'd always wanted to write. I enjoyed reading, yeah. but life gets in the way. And it's only at this time of my life that I've got the opportunity to spend some time writing. Right. And, um, you know, just walking along Cleethorpes, thinking of a few ideas and getting them down on paper as a hobby initially. Yeah. And then uh, started to think, well, maybe I could make this into a book. And uh, it just went from there. Okay, now without revealing too much, because at the end of the day we want people to buy your book. Yes. Um, it's called, I'm just going to pick it up here, it's called For the, for the Love of Emily. Um, and obviously it, it's got quite an interesting storyline. Yeah. And we would say it is an adult novel. Yes. Um, how has it been received by readers? Well, certainly locally at the moment. It's only been out a month today. Right. I launched it on the 15th of August. Yeah. Locally, fantastic. And obviously people I've worked with. Yeah. I need to get it out there further afield, really. But the reviews on Amazon at the moment, uh, I think last night there was 21 five-star reviews. Yeah. And on the uh, American uh, Amazon, five. So hopefully I'm doing something right. You yeah. know, I mean, obviously there's always room for improvement, but I, I'm just amazed at the response. So. What I mean, I have to ask you, why choose to do an adult themed novel then as your debut? Um, well, I think women are looking for a bit of escapism, nice holiday read, yeah. something to take you out of, uh, you know, mundane yes, things really, yes, working. Yeah, yeah. So that was what I thought. I thought I'd attract a wider audience with the, the female population. Yeah. And I'm interested in it myself. Yes, I do like yeah. reading romance myself. So yeah. that's that's why I wanted to do that. Yeah, and like you said it's been received well. What did your family think when you said you were going to write <laughs> this adult novel? <laughs> I think my daughter's dying to death. But <laughs> apart from that, you know, people are enjoying it because it, there is a story there apart yeah. from the adult content there is a real story there which which fortunately people are saying they're enjoying and the intrigue and and what's happening and, and looking turning the pages yes. towards the next bit they yeah. are enjoying it yeah. so that's good and, and i know from from the cover we can we can see it involves a sewing machine and obviously dressmaking but obviously quite a sultry picture which probably give people hints and it ends in a british courtroom it as does. well it so does, it's yes. quite a gripping yeah, story but it's not all court because somebody did say to me i find those type of books you know they're not for me it's not all court it's a couple of chapters really so yeah. i don't want anybody getting the idea it is all just you know a court scene it's not by any means but it is towards the end of the book yeah. and i need the court scene in there because of the intrigue and what's okay. going on 
Did you have to do lots of research for this then? Well, only internet research. You know, obviously I needed to look at the, the courtroom and, and we've all seen dramas and yeah. things like that. So in terms of a lot of research, no. Yeah. But I needed to just verify things and check with people that it was accurate. Yeah. So just a little bit, oh, yes. That's good. Now, uh, and also, you know, you said this, this is a hobby. You mm. get ideas for books. So how long has it taken you to get this into okay. book form? Well, I moved to Cleethorpes two years ago from Keelby. And um, it, it was a hobby. So I didn't write every day. It was just a couple of hours here, there and everywhere. Yeah. But the last year, I've been having it edited, professionally edited. So that's taken me a lot of rewriting. The, the editor gives you advice. Right. So the last year, I would say I've been more, more intensely, probably probably a year to get it where we are now. Okay. And again, we're going to, well, I was going to say, we'll ask you more questions, but we're running out of time. So we'll stay with us. Yes. And uh, we'll keep talking about this book, For the Love of Emily. So join me after the break when we find out your thoughts on the new leader of the Labour Party and we'll also bring you all the latest local sport. Welcome back. You're watching Estuary News, still to come. We find out your opinions on Jeremy Corbyn, Labour's new leader, and they may come as a surprise. And we have the latest local sports news. Well, still with me in the studio is Cleethorpe's author, Joy Wood. Joy, we were talking um, before the break there, obviously, about how you've been inspired to do the book. And I was going to ask you the question before the ad break rudely interrupted me. You're a self-published author, so why choose that route instead of the traditional one? Well, I think initially I wasn't certain whether I could write. So I wrote the book and then got advice from local uh, writers. Yeah. The process is a long process to try and get published. I understood that and I really wanted mm. to get my book out there. So what I decided to do was self-publish it, which is, when I say it's easy enough to do, it's time consuming and there is a cost to doing that. Yeah. But I wanted to get my novel out there so that people could read it. In the future, if I write another one, obviously I'll do my very best to get published. Yeah. You know, that's obviously everybody's yes, aim. Yeah. But for the moment, self-publishing suiting me, and I'm just delighted with the response I've had, really. And that's good, because like you say, you, you, you're testing the waters, yeah. really. Now, are there any plans? I mean, is, I mean, I've not read this book, I have to say. So is there a sequel lined up for this one with these characters, or is there another book on the horizon? No. N not that one, that's a standalone. Yeah. I'm actually a nurse, so I'm writing one to do with nursing. I thought oh. I would try and do that, so I'm writing one currently to do with nursing. So it'll be different, but again, it will be romance, because okay. I've enjoyed doing that one, yeah. so definitely romance. <laughs> very, I'll be a very interesting yes. one to read, <laughs> won't it? Now, for, for you to, to come this one, you say you know, you, you've spoken to many authors. Yes. I mean, what advice would you have for anybody out there that thinks, yeah, I want to do it? Well, I think I would certainly say right, because it's, it's therapeutic for anybody. We hear lots of mental health conditions, things like that, that people have. It is very nice. It's a form of escapism. And if you get your writing down on paper, mm. that's the main thing, first yeah. of all. And then maybe speak to somebody. There's plenty of people online. The writing community is so supportive. Just to look at your work for you and advise which way to go with it. It may just be a short story, something like that. But I think if you like write reading, you like writing, then I would just say just keep trying. Yeah, because... I mean, that, that I suppose a lot of people are put off by the thought of rejections yes, by publishers, of aren't course, they? Yes, of course. And we have to accept that, you know, to, to get published, it's, it really is terribly difficult, mm. I, I would imagine. I haven't done, gone through that process myself. But to be able to self-publish, it's, it's opened a door for so many of us. Yeah. So, you know, and if I've done it, uh, yeah, other people so can do it. Everybody else can do it. Um, for you, I mean, you've, you've written this romantic novel. Are there any other sort of like genres that you would like to, to dial, you know, dive into? Well, crime, but that you would have to do so much research for that. And uh, I'm not saying I can't do that, but I think for me, the romance is, is, is what I like to do. Mm. And, and if this is anything to go by, clearly it's doing okay at the moment. So yeah. I just think to myself, I'll stay with the romance. But 
authors digress all the time, you know, go under a different name and write a different yes. type. So who knows what the future holds at the moment? I'm just enjoying <laughs> what I've got and what I'm doing. So, but who knows in the future? Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for coming in. Are you doing a book signing, are you, tomorrow? Tomorrow in Kielby. Yes, yes in at Kielby. Lily's in Kielby tomorrow. Okay, brilliant. Well, that's great. Thank you ever so much for coming and good luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. In the light of Jeremy Corbyn being elected Labour's new leader, the MP for Islington North has been described by some media outlets as the man who will bring an end to the world and by others as Comrade Corbyn. With Grimsby being a true Labour heartland, we went to ask Grimbearings if they think Corbyn is a credible leader and this is what they had to say. Disgusting. Absolutely well. He'll never ever get in. Labour's finished altogether now. It looks like being a change, doesn't it, from what we've had. <laughs> you don't know my thoughts on this. I think he's a rude idiot. Although the one thing I do like about him, having to join up railway. He hates the Queen. He loves the IRA. Such things as that. You know, it's terrible. I just think it'll. I think be unelectable. It could be a good thing due to all the austerity we've had all these years. I think um, it might pave the way for solidarity in between all the unions. And because these in Grimsby, we're all well. We're on um, TV programmes as skint. We're like very deprived in this area, and any more cuts can have detrimental, detrimental effects. Well, you watch with all the strikes and everything now. You'd be backing all of it. Anything that's wrong, you'll back it. He's the outside, wasn't he? 200 to 1 last year, that's for a good reason. He's not very good at all, he's rubbish. Okay, so they stop the clock. So, what we're going to do now, just going to... some interesting opinions there. And joining me now to discuss what's been happening is Dan Kemp. Now, Dan, you really? went out on that. Um, I did, I was box asking the questions. Clock. Were you this surprised? Morning. Honestly, no, not particularly. However, okay. it is, of course, it is a Labour heartland. I would have thought a lot of the, the people that we would have spoken to, you'd, have, you'd assume a lot of them would be Labour voters, and you would have thought that maybe they would sympathise with Jeremy Corbyn's kind of left-wing views, but mm -hmm. it didn't seem that way. Obviously, one of the gentlemen we spoke to was a big fan, but apart from that, there was quite a lot of disdain in, for him. It is interesting, because I'm getting the feeling that a lot of the older generation are really against him. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how it that, feels. That's how, it's, that's that how, it, the, seemed. Yeah, that's how yeah. it seemed on the streets this morning, yes. Interesting. Right, what, what else have we got there? Well, the first story is in the Hull Daily Mail today, and this is quite a sad story, that a 58-year-old um, man from Hull died doing the Great North Run right. up in Newcastle and Gateshead on Sunday. Uh, he's been named as David Colley by the paper. And he's a, apparently was a regular runner, and he has done several Great North runs as well as other fundraising runs as well in the past. And yeah, it's a very unfortunate story, really. Oh um, dear. But he did die of natural causes. They've, they've found. Okay, and that was actually was that during the race? This was this is or during after? the race. Yes. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. That's very tragic, and the isn't the it? The postmortem, as I said, yeah, resulted it's it came back as natural causes. And the spokesman from the Great Run Company said he deeply regrets the loss of life of a participant at the Great North Run. And his deepest sympathies and condolences go to family and friends. And of course, this now opens up the debate about dangers and, of course, if they've had the right amount of, I suppose, medical professionals on hand and things like that. Yeah, very sad. It is, it is quite a strain on the body to, for anyone. This guy's obviously a regular runner and yeah. Yeah, something to look is. out for, isn't it, and be conscious, conscious of. Okay, right, next, next story. Yeah, this is from what the Grimsby Telegraph. This is a, a road in North East Lincolnshire, which has been branded the most persistently dangerous highway in Britain. Ah, this is our lead story today, isn't it? Yeah, I know if you were watching Richard earlier, people will, yeah. have, will have heard this. It's a 10 mile stretch of the A18, which is between Laceby and Ludborough in Lincolnshire. The number of fatal and serious crashes have gone up by 70%, mm. which is a, a serious number. And the reasons they, they've cited this are because it's got trees running alongside it i read well I, I remember when we were at school we we were always told you know if you were if you were driving a car that cars get magnetic magnetic yeah, magnetically attracted to trees that's not that's not true really but that's, in the, that's not true no but in <laughs> what the, were they teaching the you at school <laughs> in the experience of obviously the officers that have to come and come across these things if you crash into a field you always find the tree that's what that's what they always said 
Really? Yeah. So if, okay. if you've got a road covered in trees, then it's not looking good, is it? No. But on that one, like you say, it's the stretch from Laceby to Ludbrook, which is quite, can yeah. be quite twisty, winding, has got we trees. We go down there quite often, obviously, to do stories. Yeah. And I can, I can agree that is exactly the case. Yeah, there were f apparently there were 10 incidents from 28, 2008 to 2010 compared to 17 from 2011 to 2013. And 41% of accidents in the period from 2011 to 2013 were vehicles veering off in those winding roads into trees. Mm. That's something for people to have a look at, I think. It is. Right, well, if we've got a short one. We've got a short one, yes. This is the s and the more sad news Very really quick. yesterday that Brian Close, the former Yorkshire and England batsman sadly passed away aged 84 and he was Did, the youngest person he? to ever play for England in 1949 against New Zealand. Very sad, very sad. Right, that is all time, time for Dan, thank Not you very much for that. <laughs>In Rugby Union at the weekend, Hull Ionians went down 23-16 away to Richmond in the National League. Ionians' only try was this penalty try and next up for them is a home game against Plymouth on Saturday. North Ferriby United have now had eight games on the trot without a single loss. They beat Gloucester City at the weekend. First half goals were from Tom Denton and Danny Clark. In the second half, Ryan Kendall scored the third goal of the match. Their next match is away and against Harrogate. The vice chairman of Cleethorpes Town Football Club has revealed the reasons behind a team of world football stars playing in the town last week. The Lashings XI, which included a number of former international and Premier League stars, played at the Linden Homes Club on Friday and David Mann says it was the, nearly cric the nearby cricket club that inspired them. Cleethorpes Cricket Club, great club. We 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 do uh, work very well with them. There's no there's, there's no you know no uh, crossovers or anything like that. And I've been to a couple of their dues and they were great. And then they said to us, "We've got a football team, you know." We said, "Right, let's get them here. This this could be fantastic." And the sun's out. There's lots of people here. It's great. That's all from me for now, and I'll be back with more sports news soon. If you have a sports story for us, then please email us on sport at s3.tv. Give us a call on 01472 31553 or find us on Twitter or Facebook. Bye for now. That's it for tonight. If you have a new story for us, visit our Facebook or Twitter pages. Email news at s3.tv or phone Grimsby. 01472 315 553. Good night. History TV Weather, sponsored by Grimsby Institute for a brighter future. Hello and welcome to History TV's Weather. A mostly dry and bright morning for Wednesday. Any early mist or fog clearing, but clouds soon thickening in the afternoon with outbreaks of rain spreading in the evening. Maximum temperature of 16 degrees. Thursday, cloudy and windy with rain at first, becoming drier and brighter later. History TV weather, sponsored by Grimsby Institute, for a brighter future.